And what drew you towards, because this looked horrifying and scary to me, <laughs> although it's very neat. I am very proud of all of my apprentices. They do a great job for the company. They're securing the future of Chiron. We all complain about the skills gap and we all know that workforce is a huge issue right now. While automation is one great way to help take care of it, we still need qualified people in the trade trained to be able to keep this industry going. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today we're at Sharon, who not only creates these crazy CNC machines, they also have one of the most highly developed apprenticeship and training programs that I've ever seen and today, we're gonna to get to find out all about it. Let's go check it out. It's awesome that Sharon actually gives that possibility. You know, if you wanna go back to school, then they'll fully support you. Too. Now, Sharon's a really interesting company. It's one that I haven't had a lot of experience with over the years, but as we've been out in the field going to different places, we keep seeing them, Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. They're geared towards extremely, extremely high production. You're gonna see them in the automotive industries. You're gonna see them really strongly performing in the health industry. A lot of this stuff is medical, implantations, devices, a lot of stuff that takes extreme precision and very, very high production standards. But the other thing that's really important about this place that I've heard that I really would like to get some more information on is that they have an extremely strong apprenticeship program here. In fact, the majority of people that work here have actually come through their apprenticeship program. From CNC machining to the more mechatronics end of things, we're gonna find out how they do it and why it performs so well. So to help us learn a little bit more about what Sharon's doing in terms of training and apprenticeship, we're very lucky that we're joined by Robert, who's the operations manager here at the North Carolina facility. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for coming. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we have going on behind us here. So we are, we are part of the Apprenticeship 2000 program. Um, in that program, we take high school juniors and seniors and start pulling them into manufacturing. At Sharon, we have two different apprenticeships. We have CNC machining and we have mechatronics engineering technologies. They're both state registered apprenticeship programs. They're 8,000 hours of training. So 1,600 hours of community college classes at Central Piedmont Community College, and then 6,400 hours of hands-on training at Sharon. Um, apprentices start out learning basic hand skills. So, they learn how to use different types of tools, safety, things of that nature. They, they start in the German style of apprenticeship and they file metal and learn the feel of it. They make different projects and each project uh, teaches them a little bit more and makes them use what they've learned in the past. And they do that and then they learn uh, manual machining, milling, lathe, band saws, grinders, things of that nature. Then when they finish their second year, they get to make a decision of whether they want to be a mechatronics engineering uh, journeyman or they want to be a CNC machinist journeyman. That's when they make and, that split. And from that point, we, we take them and uh, they go on that path. Now, how many people would be involved in this program at one time? So currently, we only have five apprentices. We're missing three. We've graduated uh, 12 apprentices from our program and if we take four this year, that'll be the biggest group we've had. And now when it comes to working through this apprenticeship program, how does it work? If they work out in the program, do they end up getting a job here at Sharon as well? All the apprentices who go through the Apprenticeship 2000 apprenticeship are guaranteed a job with the company that they 
did their apprenticeship with. The apprentices received their associate's degree in mechatronics engineering technology from Central Piedmont Community College. They get a journeyman certificate from the state of North Carolina, and they get a federal journeyman certificate. So this is a very serious program. This isn't just a training program. They're getting tangible results out of this. They are getting tangible results out of it. Um, and we have apprentices who go forward using our tuition reimbursement program, and they continue their education. So we have two apprentices who are working toward their engineering degree. Oh, wow. So not only does it not finish here, they can actually take it even further. They can keep going. So the goal is we're trying to create the best employees we can get and students who want to continue on, want to learn more, and want to keep moving through the company can continue to learn and gain as much knowledge as they want. So now that we got a chance to hear from Robert about the program that Chiron provides with Apprenticeship 2000, I'd actually like to take you guys to speak to some of these apprentices. They're between first and third year behind me. They're here, you know, about 40 hours a week doing this every day. So let's hear their experiences with the program. What year apprentice are you now? Uh, I'm in my third year of apprenticeship, so I've been here for about two years. What kind of stuff are you doing on a daily basis here in the program? So, still learning every day. It's never stagnant. I'm always working on a new project, learning how to use a new tool or new process. So, one, there's still, I'm still being trained. So whether it's in this area over here, working on these machines, or if I'm working on our uh, actual production machines out there. Oh, so not only are you guys using the manual stuff, they'll literally take you out yep. to the real, the real machines, the CNC yeah. machines, and get you to produce parts on them or help produce or do QA and stuff on those. Yep. Yep. And when it comes to CNC machining and mechatronics, what kind of role are you aiming towards once you're done with the program? Probably more interested in becoming an applications engineer, so CNC machining, uh, but I guess this brain's made for multiple things, I'm not just interested in set on CNC machining right now. So I think, I mean, everything we do here, everything that's offered is pretty interesting. There's a lot of nice routes you can take with it too. Now, what got you into CNC machining? Did you come straight from high school here? Uh, yes, sir. I graduated from Myers Park last year. Um, I, the, the first thing that really drew me was it's just, it's such a great and big opportunity. and. You know, originally I wasn't like, oh, I want to go into specifically CNC machining, but you know, the opportunity was so great and whatnot that I was like, ah, oh, this is probably the best place, my best, you know, area to go into and whatnot. Now, when it comes to using the more manual machines, is that something that you started in high school and then moved on to here, or is this something you started right on the floor? No, actually, I've, n I've never touched a, um, a machine before I started um, working here. And then when it comes to the next couple of years, what are you most excited for, or what are you most looking forward to when it comes to the things you're gonna learn? Um, honestly, what um, what kind of like Steven and um, Steven's doing on a daily basis, he's kind of working on the machines and working on these parts that you know the um, engineering needs or they need on the floor because they broke something or anything like that. It's super cool that not only, you know, obviously you have to start making projects that aren't critical, you gotta start doing the little stuff, but I think it's really cool that they actually have you doing customer projects here. You're not just doing busy work, you're not just doing fun stuff or training stuff. Some of the stuff that's here will go to a customer's oh, plan. Yeah. What would you say to people who may be considering CNC machining as a career or a program like this, but haven't been involved in it? This is a good program because you have your college, and you get, you get paid for it, so. Oh, you guys good. are all paid here too? Yeah. So this isn't just education, this is yeah. actually a job right now yeah. as well. Yeah, we're on a job. And how many hours a week would you say you spend here at the shop? 40 hours a week. Oh, you guys have a full work week yeah. here every full week. Work. Yeah. So when it comes to Sharon, the one thing that's really shocked me, typically companies kind of specialize either in really, really small work or really, really large work, I don't find many that tend to do both. And here at Chiron, you know, we've got those machines that can do tiny, tiny little watch parts, but you can also get 12 meters into some of these things. Let's go see what we can find out around here. This is another one of the machines we have, which is the Micro 5. Oh, wow. So this is a very small machine, 50 millimeter cubic work area. 
It also had what we call our feed five system, so we can load up pallets in here. There's a little robot in there. That oh, right actually, in the inside there. Yeah, which will actually load that. And then the tools are loaded by robot also. Now, what is that more. size of tool holder on there? That's that an HSK? HSK 15. Teeny? Yes. And I guess this is medical industry, watchmaking, Correct. electronics, really, really small stuff. Yep. So 60,000 RPM spindle is standard, and then we'll go up to 80,000 also. And I take it this thing has probing and has tool detection? No, we haven't put a probe on it yet. Really? The problem is trying to find a probe that mounts the HSK-15. Ah. <laughs> I don't think you can fit everything in that little holder that way. So, yeah, we haven't had a probe for it yet. Um, tool detection is also, we can do it with a whisker switch. But a lot of the tools that we use, you can see you can see there, they're very small. Like the biggest end mill you might put in this is, is three millimeters. Oh, really? <laughs> and that, it won't, it would, that spindle cannot, it's only a one Newton spindle. Right. So it can't take a, and bury a three millimeter tool. Not enough torque. It's in always, there. and that's what the importance of the high, high speed spindle, but also we have extremely high feed rates on the machine. What is a typical feed rate on that? So this is, this can go up to 10,000 meters. Woo! <laughs> now it's because you're only driving over a small area. Right. It, it, you know, so when you watch it, it kind of looks like a little sewing machine. Now this is the really small one. And you were saying you guys go from here all the way up to 12, 12 meter. meter? <laughs> Over here is, is our DZ-15. This is a twin spindle machine, so we do a lot of twin spindle machines. Oh, okay. So if we go over to this side. Oh, I'm looking at the loading. <laughs> yeah, that's the loader. So this is a workpiece changer. So while you're machining on the back side, you can be changing parts on the front side. Keeping it going all the so time. So your part load and unload time basically becomes four seconds. And so this machine with twin spindles, we can do two parts at the same time. Now this, in this style machine, the spindles are fixed to each other. So when one moves, they're both going. Yeah. On our bigger machines, we can make them independent. These things are very compact. It's kind of nice. Not so huge this floor is our, space. That's one of the things we we we're very we try to keep our machines compact. Even when you go back to the bigger machines, you'll see how we set everything inside the enclosure of the machine. This machine we use a lot in the medical industry. So it's a 4,000 RPM turning spindle, but it's also a C-axis. Oh. Then I've got a tilt head, three axis on top. And then I've got a linear axis here that also has a vice on it that can spin 360 degrees. You can pretty much hit that thing from every angle you can imagine and can turn it. I can finish almost every medical part complete in the machine. So we'll step into the manufacturing facility. Oh, this place is huge. Wow, you guys have a lot of machines. How many machines in here at a time would be in process? There's usually about 10 to 12 in process. Constantly kind of going. Yeah. And then sometimes we'll, you know, we'll hit peaks where there's more. And how long is the turnaround for one of these automations? Is it a couple months? Is it weeks? Normally it sits on our floor for probably about a month and a half to two months. It's pretty quick still yeah. for a full automation buildup. We also do rebuilds here. Now we only take in a customer's machine, rebuild it, and return it to them. We don't buy used machines and rebuild them and sell them. That's not the market we're in. Um, but a lot of customers that have our machines have seen the value in them and they're willing to rebuild them. You have a, a little forklift in here. We I have see. a little forklift. Yeah. I mean, some of our machines, this is 35,000 pounds and a lot of our new machines that can't pick up. <laughs> what do you do in that case? Use the cranes? We, we get an outside rigger because oh, wow. even our cranes can't pick them up. I don't know if you guys can see, there's actually crane units that run the entire length of this place, it looks like. So this is one of our newer machines. It's the DZ-25. So what you have is a full five axis machine. Oh. So you've got plus or minus 120 degrees of, of, of tilt and 360 degrees of rotation. And I take it that's a twin spindle machine? Yes. Because we have the heads two pallets are, The heads there. are just up, parked up right now. Oh yeah, no, I see them up there. Yeah. Now that I take it, because those look like pallet ready, what kind of automation can so you do So this has this? got a pallet changer on it. I take it it's on the back side. It's on the back side. So this is the operator side, the back side is the change, the pallet side. And what size parts are you putting on these? So this can do, yeah, 800 millimeters between centers. Oh wow. And then we go up to 1200 millimeters between centers. And I take it you can put some weight on that table as yes. well. So as I mentioned, not only do we have first, second, and third year apprentices here, a lot of people that work here at Sharon are actually graduates of this program. 
A lot of them are here working on the floor today, so we're gonna see if we can snag a few of them and find out what they're doing now that they're finished with the program. Come on. So you went through this program, how many years ago was that? Um, I started in 2018. 2018, and it's a four-year program? Four-year program. So you're a fresh graduate of this? Um, a little bit, I'm about a year out. About a year out, and yeah. you are on the application side? Yes. What does an application person do here at your home? Um, we do a lot of programming and part to part. It's different every day, obviously a different part every day. And um, yeah, I love it. I, lo I love programming and learning something new every day. Now, when you were going through the apprenticeship program, the stuff you're doing today, is it stuff that you were trained on? It's similar, but also it's kind of like going from an iPhone 4 to like the newest iPhone. So we go from manually machining, you understand how chips are made, as we can see in here. Yes. <laughs> um, but obviously when you switch to programming it by your hand and you know the machine's gonna do exactly what you tell it to. So if you, you know, put one wrong code in there, you gotta kinda make sure you know what you're doing. Of course. Now, not only do they do CNC machining apprenticeships here for their program, the other thing they do is mechatronics, which hopefully we're gonna learn a little bit more about. And I'm joined by Frankie. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you for having now, me. Now, you're a semi-recent grad of the Mechatronics, am I even pronouncing that correctly? Correct. Apprenticeship program. What exactly is Mechatronics? So Mechatronics is a combination of mechanical, um, electrical, automation, um, all those sorts of fields kind of in one, okay. one area. That's, that's what we do. So especially when you guys are setting up like a, an automation add-on or you know, setting up a cell, you're the one that actually makes sure everything can connect to each other, talk to each other, and actually functions. Right, so we have an automation department as well. So they're the ones that will actually program the stuff, but mm -hmm. I work pretty closely with them as electrical and get everything kind of moving. And what drew you towards, because this looks horrifying and scary to me, <laughs> although it's very neat. I don't mess with two things, plumbing and electricity. <laughs> What kind of drew you towards this? Because it's such a specialized field, and I mean, maybe that's what drew you towards it. Mm -hmm. Well, so I, I enjoy being hands-on, um, and that's mechanical, but the thing that kind of drew me to it is understanding why things work, how things work, um, especially something I can't see. It's more of a challenge. So really getting kind of in-depth understanding was really kind of what drew me into it. So what does a normal day look like here at Chiron for you now that you're graduated from the program. What kind of things do you handle? So for right now, I'm on working on the 25 machine. And usually what we do, we go in, we set it up, we do geometry sheets on it, we check on it, and then we do a bunch of retrofits for the precise customer. It depends on which they want on it. And after that, we ship it up, we, uh, we check it, we ship it, and then give it to the customer. So there you have it guys. Thank you very much to the team at Sharon for having us today and letting us meet your students and your apprentices here. I think it's an absolutely fantastic apprenticeship program that I wish more places would do. It's something that you know I wish we could emulate at my shop and it's a great thing to look forward to and aspire to. And of course, if you're in the North Carolina area, I would highly recommend getting in touch if you are interested in this program. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.